world today, 2021, sometimes it doesn't go together. Shemitah tells us we should uh, abandon our land, make it heftier, and allow everyone to come and pick. And you and the poor person, everybody together are going outside and picking all the fruits and maybe vegetables they want. Everybody are together, you all eat together, and when you think about it today, you tell yourself, won't happen. I will get my fruits and vegetables only if I go out and pick them. And what happens if it's in Golan Heights and in down in the Negev? How exactly to imply the Shemitah today is a very difficult question. I have to say, here is a very good place. Because when you think about communal garden, somehow this is Shemitah all year round, all seven years. Because everybody are together, it doesn't, nobody owns it, even though there's somebody in charge, but nobody owns, you're not selling anything, which the Shemitah Polish, you're not supposed to sell, you're supposed to distribute, to give out. And at least one part, part of Shemitah is very easy to fulfill uh, uh, here in a communal garden, but the other parts are not as simple. And that's what I want to speak uh, today. So the first thing is, what are the forbidden, what are the forbidden acts in Shemitah? What you cannot do? Help me. Plan. Plan. Good. What Pick else? Fruit. What? Pick fruit. Pick fruit? Good. Good. Very good answer. Good. Good. I didn't hear. Pick, Pick food. So, just a second. What's your name? Ezra. Ezra. So, can you eat the food? Or you cannot? If it falls. If it falls, so, so um, you can. Okay. And if it's, if, if it's still on the tree, you cannot touch it. Okay. Good answer. We'll see. It's not exact, but it's a very good answer. You can pick whatever was... Yes, he said. I asked no, him. You can pick whatever was sold from last year. You can pick whatever was sold from last year, meaning if you planted on the sixth year, which is very relevant here, we'll discuss in a minute, whatever, let's say, vegetables you want to eat during Shemitah, you have to plant them this year, sixth year, because you're not allowed to plant. Meaning the Rambam, Maimonides writes in his book, what did people do in the second temple? What did they eat in Shemitah? You eat, but you can't plant during Shemitah. So what did they eat in the second temple? The Rambam answers, who knows? Storage in those times. Pickles. Okay, so you can have pickles, okay. That, it's true, but it's not what he says. What else he says? What did they eat? Shmita. What, what did, did people eat? Just now? No. Whatever was still from Shvi. So, so, true. So what did they eat? Practically? What they eat? Fish. Fish. Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. Beans. Fish, meat, etc. Mm. And... Thank you very much. Ezra. Says, Ezra, thank you very much. In Shmita, we ate food. Not we, meaning the people. We ate food, meaning what didn't we eat? Vegetables. Vegetables. Meaning the Rambam said, if you have food, you have a tree, you, you have it here. I went to my sister, she has a lemon tree in her garden, and she had like dozens of lemons. I said, Batya, I didn't know you're such a good farmer, you know, you, you have dozens of lemons. She told me, I didn't do anything, nothing, no water, no cutting, nothing, and I have lemons, because trees... Of but course, if you want to have no higher produce and more quality, I, I you, need to, you need to take care of it. But even if you don't do, you get food. But vegetables, as we all know, if you didn't plant it, nothing will grow. And even if you didn't plant it, but it grew by itself, how could it, how could it happen? Hashem! Seeds drops. Meaning, you planted in the sixth year and picked the cucumbers at the, end, at the beginning of the seventh year, I don't know, Cheshvan, two months after Shemitah. And then, two months afterwards, you see more cucumbers. Where did they come from? The seeds fell down during Shemitah and planted themselves. Can I eat those vegetables? No. <laughs> You are both correct. <laughs> yes and no. Yes and no. According to the Torah, it's allowed, but 
our sages said it's forbidden. Why? Because if I will come on Pesach and I will eat my cucumbers and everybody will ask me, where do you have your, these cucumbers from? Ah, no, they're, 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 they're by itself. I don't know, it grew and I ate it. And our sages were afraid that if it will be allowed, so everybody will go and plant behind, you know, behind those uh, places nobody sits and eat. So that's why it's not allowed. So uh, it's called in the halacha sfichin, something that grew by itself during Shemitah is not allowed. But can you eat it personally if you know that it's... No. You know that? No. No. Meaning, if, even if you know yes. that it's, it, it's seated by itself, no, it's not allowed. It's not allowed. It's rabbinic. It's not from the Torah, but it's still not allowed, and even he agrees with me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, what, what can't you do on Shemitah? You can't plan, you can't pick, we'll, we'll discuss in a minute. And the Torah as well says, Sadcha lo tizra vecharmicha lo tizmor. Te prun the vineyard. The grapevine. Because, do you have your... Uh, yeah, yeah, all along okay. the fence. So, again, I don't know. If all the fence. Farmers, maybe even here, you'll tell me in a minute. When they prune the, the vineyard in the, during the winter, they cut it exactly in the place that they want afterwards a new shoot, a new branch to grow Where and to have, to have, uh, just a second, to have the, the, the fruit there. Meaning when you cut, you cut in order that it will grow exactly in that place and that's forbidden. So these are the... But you can do it before Shemitah. Of course. Before Shemitah you can before. do... Everything up until Rosh Hashanah. Up until Rosh Hashanah, from Rosh Hashanah, you cannot plant, you cannot prune, and the Torah says you cannot harvest and you cannot uh, pick. But Wait, then, you just said that that's the oraita, not the best of right? not the oraita. Yeah, now we're talking about the, the oraita from the Torah. Just a second. Four things are not allowed four and a half planting, pruning, and picking, and also harisha, plowing the ground. Those, those are the four or five things that are not allowed. Flowing the ground, oh, flowing. You said it starts from Rosh Hashanah, but somebody told me this starts from out. It, <laughs> it's true, in a minute we'll get to it, okay? Because planting, some of the things you're supposed to, to plant a bit in advance. In a minute we'll get to it, okay? So the four or five things, uh, you're, not allow, you're not allowed to do it. It's always planting, Pruning and picking, but picking, there's a mitzvah of eating sweet food. How can we eat without picking? One option is to pick with your mouth, or to pick what, what, what fell down, but the Torah, but the halacha tells us no. You can pick for your own use and your family. You cannot pick if it's for commercial use, meaning to sell it. So if most people in the house and even here, I guess you're not selling it. So it's allowed. You can pick as you wish. You don't have to wait uh, uh, to wait until it falls down. You can pick it. It's it's not a problem. Now there are many other things we do. We put fertilizer. We we give water. We take out the weeds. Irrigation. Many many things that are all called melachot de rabbanan from the sages. And this depends. Sometimes they're allowed, sometimes not. Does anybody know? When are they allowed and when not? Water. Let's say to water. Water is not a... Uh, okay. No, 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 no. no. It's good, very close. Not to improve the growth. Exactly, that, that's the halachic definition. If it's to maintain or to improve growth. If it's to maintain the plant, the vegetable, the food, it's allowed. If it's to give it extra growth, that is forbidden. This is the general rule, which is very problematic. Why? How do you know the difference? How? Water, watering, to give it water. Is it... What is it? It's allowed or not allowed? Do you have yes. to give only the minimum that it won't yes. die? Yeah. Or you can give as usual? Uh, a little bit minimum to So this is a discussion among, among the rabbis. But we say to water, you can give water a bit less than usual. A bit less than usual. Why? You don't have to give the minimum, minimum, minimum because then 
when you're on the red line, you can sometimes cross and it can die. And you can keep it in the same, I would say, the same level, but not exactly the same, because usually we give it water that you want a bit extra. They grow more, so water we say a bit less. What does it mean a bit less? Tachlis. Good question. So it's, it's 10 minutes here every day, in the, three times a day, Nagi. So can you do it nine or eight minutes every yeah. time? Good. Good. And then you're not, it's not a severe damage, but it's a bit less than, than, than the optimal. That's what you should do. So you don't have to cut off the drip irrigation. Exactly what I, what I said. You don't have to keep it on. Again, if you have a tree that doesn't need water, you give it water only because you feel like it. So don't give it water during Shemitah. But if it's most vegetables and most uh, flowers that without, without it will die, or they will be very damaged, so you can do it. Now, what about putting fertilizer in the garden? Is this to maintain it or to increase the growth? Improve the growth. That's fertilizer. That's the whole point. So, what can what alternative can we can we do in Shemitah? Before Shemitah, and that's what we say. You have to buy long release fertilizers. You have to take six and even twelve months. And you have to put them in the ground, above ground, or inside the ground, and then it will release for 12 months. You're not what? supposed to put fertilizer during Shemitah, even if it's through the irrigation system. Some fertilizer today you put in the water, it's, 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 it's better not to put the fertilizer, uh, unless, you know, a special case, so then, you know, you can call and consult, but basically not to put fertilizer. <laughs> now, we're talking, let's talk about the most difficult thing, weeds. Weeds. Can you pick or cut the weeds? <laughs> Why are you picking the weeds? <laughs> okay, either because it's ugly, B, because to help the plants to grow. And weeds is mentioned in the Gemara as a forbidden act, midi rabbanan, but forbidden. So, let's, the best. What is the best solution to do before Shemitah? To cover the ground, either mulch or uh, little stone, gravel, or to put even plastic sheets and on them, some yeah. dirt, to, to put something that you will have less, less weeds, that's the best. Even if you put mulch, you will have a bit of weed, but, but not as much. That's, we, we think that's the best option. What about if the wheat is growing between um, the tile? And, and a piece of wood, and then comes the, um, the fruit. Yes. So, okay, that's the, the, the next sentence. However, if you prepared in advance, but it wasn't enough, and then you still have a lot of weed, now we wrote in the book, that's not published in the English one, if it's going to hurt your plants badly to take the water, I, or it, it grows a lot, very tall, that you're afraid of all kinds of pests. And I was in Bechemesh, somebody told me I'm afraid from snakes. If I'll have uh, too much, I don't know if it's... Okay? Or the image and the beauty of your garden is severely damaged. <coughs> what exactly is severely damaged? Another good question. But severely damaged, then you are allowed to cut, to, to take care of the weeds. <laughs> The best solution is to do it indirect, meaning if you can put a plastic sheet and to, die, to kill them indirect. Second option, just a second, is to spray if you use. If you use. And the third option is to cut with a, with a mesh. Weed mesh, whacker. what's called weed, weed cutter, whacker. or with a knife above ground. No, don't pull you out the roots. You are not allowed on Shemitah, no matter what, to pull out from the ground. No. Even if, it, if you do it, cut it above ground. And I'll just say a tip. If in the half a year before Shemitah, you make sure every time something grows, you cut it, and then you have no seeds, so then you will have less seeds in the ground for next year. But if you remember two weeks before Shemitah, then all the seeds are ready in the ground, so you will have a tough time, a tough time before. So here as well, and for all of you in the house, now is the time to uproot everything and e every time it goes to, to take it out and then ne next year you will have not as less less of a problem uh, yes sorry what about uh, safety you have a 
Definitely, there's no question. Of course, you can cut it. If it's a safety reason. Oh, so as I said, on Shemitah, you're not allowed. What was the you're question? Allowed, are you allowed to pick weeds from the ground? Ah, so weed. we said, from the ground, you're not supposed to weed. Okay? Next. Uh, cutting the trees, pruning or uh, no. cutting them. Can you do it on Shemitah? No. Basically, no. Can the tree uh, survive without a year of cutting it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cut it before Shemitah, the few weeks before Shemitah. Cut it, and for a year, in most trees, they will survive. It, to cut a little of it. To cut a little of it, knowing that for a year you won't cut it. So think, you know, exactly, you know, if you know it's going to get into your, into your, uh, I don't know, your balcony, you know already in a year it will go to your balcony, so cut it now a bit back, so you, you will know it's not a problem. However, if it goes into, if it's dangerous, or people can fall, no. or there's a damage, uh, a branch that you know it can, uh, people can get injured, of course you can cut, there's no, there's no uh, question, uh, uh, safety is, is before everything. Uh, this year, during the you should cut them. You should cut them. It's dangerous and it's not good for the tree. You should cut them, definitely. definitely. So similarly, if, if it breaks or you know kids climb on it and it cracks, we can, yes, we can saw it off. Yes, you should. But this one is starting to break because people are climbing. Okay. Wait, you can use this pose that in, in the garbage? Yes, yes. Ah, this question. doesn't have That's Shemitah. That's a good question. Kudushat Shemitah. In a minute, we'll talk about Kudushat Shemitah. In a minute. <laughs> now, if even if you want for your, I don't know, you want for Lag Baomer, you want some, to cut some wood, you're allowed to do it, but make sure not to do it in a place you want it to cut. Mm. Meaning that well, it will be good grow. for the tree. Meaning if your, your father wants to cut in, in a place, he said, ah, oh, you want Lag Baomer? Ah, oh, okay. So cut exactly here. It will be... Good for the tree as well. That you're not supposed to do. If you're cutting, cut it in a different way, in a different location, in the hand and not with a jigsaw, in a different way, what's called the shinui, so it will, everybody will see, and you will see that it's different than the, than the usual way. What happens if you have a rose in your house? After the roses, the flowers are nice, and then they die, what do we do? What do we do? We cut them. Why do we cut them? We want it to grow from that place next time. It also prevents, uh, it prevents pests. Okay, as well. But I think the main reason is the next growth. And that is not allowed in Shemitah. The next place where it's going what to grow. Is, Correct. What should you do now? You should cut the rows lower, knowing that for a year, you're not, supposed to, you're not supposed to cut it. So the first blossom will be nice, the next ones may be less, but you're not supposed to do it. Um, problematic. But what happens if you have, if you want the rose for your Shabbat table? Now again, ah, I want it for my Shabbat table. Aha, I'll cut it because I know I want the next one, so I'll do same problem. So, the same thing, cut it in a different way, with your hand and not with a saw, in a different location that you and everybody will understand, because of it's not, the main goal here is for the flower and not for the, for the next growth of the, of the rose. Uh, we did the, the main ah, if you have a hedge, uh, a, a bush, and uh, you don't have, but many, many people have in their gardens, can you trim it every two, three months or every month like the garden does? Can you do it or not? No. no. Yes! And I'll tell you why. Because when you have the bush, do you want it to grow more? Yeah. Or you will want it to cut it? If it will be... You, ideally, if you can tell the bush to freeze and not to grow anymore, you're happy with it. You don't want it to be bigger. You want it to be nice and green. You know, cut and trim. What can you do? It grows. So you have to trim it every month, two months. 
but according, you would want it to stay in the same place. And that is allowed because that is maintaining and not extra growth. <coughs> but if you have a hedge okay. and you have a hole in the hedge, you know, sometimes you have and then there's a hole. So what does the gardener do? Cuts everything below at the same level. Like that. He cuts the bush next to the hole so the bush will grow. Is that allowed on Shemitah? No, because you want it to have extra growth. Six. Yes. yes, and you have to do it on top. Why? Because if it grows too much and you cut it, so what color is, is the grass now? Yellow. Yellow. So what, what? you cut it and you want it to grow. That is not allowed. But if you cut it on time, when, when you cut it and it's still green, then again, theoretically you would want it to stay as it is, but it grows, so that is allowed. And if you want to be strict on Shemitah, you have to tell the gardener, come on time every month and a half. Don't come late, and because if you'll come late, I have a problem. So our our grass is supposed to look nicer on Shemitah than all the other. Okay. What, what, I, do you, what do you do with the branches that are trimmed and Yes, it has no kedushat shvi. What do you do in the tree because the branch is broken? What about the fruit on the tree on the branch of cut? In a minute, we'll get to the fruit. Okay. In a minute, branches has no kedusha. You can do with it whatever you want. Okay. Now let's talk about kedushat shvi. If you eat fruits and vegetables of shmita, you are fulfilling a mitzvah. A mitzvah of eating. A, a holy kedushat shvi'ah produce, fruits and vegetables. That, that you uh, put the seed uh, the year before shmita. Of course, thank you. If it's vegetables, you planted them a year before. If it's a tree, so it's a tree many years before. Uh -huh. It has kedushat shvi'ah special sanctity. Like in many other things, if we're talking about special things, holy things, we have to know how to deal with them. We can't do everything, whatever we want. What can we do and what we cannot do? So basically, we're not supposed to throw them to the garbage or to waste them. We're supposed to consume them in the regular way, the regular manner we do, we, we do all year around, all years around, and to, to finish everything. My father-in-law is very happy on Shemitah. Because when I got married, my wife told me that when they ate an apple, so they had to show their father, my father-in-law, the stem and the the, 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 core, the pips. And you had to eat everything and only then he allowed them to throw it into the garbage. Mm -hmm. Somehow on Shemitah, we need to teach ourselves that we are wasting a lot. Oh, yes, we are wasting a lot. Okay, we are allowed to do it. But on Shemitah, <coughs> once every seven years, we You're remind ourselves, doing. let's not waste. Let's try to consume as much as we can. Everything ha has holiness. Of course, you understand that if there's a s this very small piece of the flesh of the apple, that we're not talking about that. But we're talking about a quarter of an apple that, you know, you or the kid, it's always good to say about the kids, the kids, you know, finish uh, only three quarters of the apple, you have a quarter, that is Kadosh Bittu Shachvit. It's holy. You're not supposed to throw it into the garbage. So what? You're not, you're not, because then you're wasting it and you make it, you, by throwing it, you make it directly rot faster and it's not allowed. So what can you do? So there's what's called a Shemitah bin or a Kedushat Shemit bin or whatever you call it. You're supposed to have in your house, in your house something small and it's good to have a sign because it's nice. And you're supposed to put it there and to let it rot for five, six, seven days until it's not edible. Once it's not edible, there's no holiness and you can throw it into the compost. Either compost or to the garbage. Here, compost. If you don't have compost in the garbage, in a minute we'll talk about the compost. Okay, just a minute. Now, what happens if you put the apple and two days afterwards you have more leftovers? Now, the apple is already starting to become rotten and by you putting it next to it, so you're making what you put now a lot faster. You understand the problem? So what, what should you do? Separate it. Separate. Oh my God. Wait. You can separate with a plastic bag, you can separate with a, with a, a newspaper, with whatever. 
can put it one next to the other and you have to buy or make a shmita bin, not, uh, which is wide and uh, not deep. Why? Because you, you don't want to put it one on top of the other. You want to put it one next to the other because the first in, first out. You put it now, in a week it will not. But the next one you put in two days, it will be a week in two days. If you put one on top of the other, you have a big problem because you can't get to it. You understand? Yeah. But how does how does separating it physically if it's in the same container help? You put. You're waiting the same. You're waiting amount of time. You don't want to mix everything up. You put anything in. But everything has to be what minimally five six days. Yes. Something like that. Yes. So you can make like seven beans. Yes. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, you can do that as well. You can do that as well. Like, that, a, like a pill box. That's what you say. That, you know, no, Shemitah no, bin no. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, we do it very, very big, and Shabbat. Then take it off, and then you start again. Help you on a little bit. You, ah, and then next week. Ah, okay, I, I understand. On the Sunday, it takes it a week, and then next Sunday, you take it out, and it's a good idea. put a new one. Thank you very much. I'll remember it. Good idea. Next lecture. <laughs> uh, okay, what about compost? Can you put compost in the ground during Shemitah? No. No. No, it helps the, no. Helps helps the ground. Fertilizer, we said you can. Can you put your leftovers in the compost? No. Directly in the compost? No. No. Can you put it on a, a newspaper in the compost? Yes. And then after Shemitah, you have. You will have a lot because you didn't no, no, use no. during Shemitah and, and, and you, you, you gathered yeah. the whole year of... What about of, uh, the smell? The smell. Yeah. The smell. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that's... Okay. okay. And if you have compost all year... Okay. Good question. Good question. Uh, worms, etc. Okay. Uh, you have worms here? We do. Okay. Yeah. So the worms, of course, they add just a week afterwards. What if the fried bugs eat it? Again. The fruit? When you put it in the compost, the bugs already eat it? Very good question. Hmm. The answer is, is it edible? It? Not if you like to eat it. Is it edible? No. There's an answer on it. It's gross. If the answer is no, so it doesn't have dusha, it doesn't have sanctity. Hmm. And if it's edible, but sometimes it's edible, but I, you know, there's a tomato, there's a, you know, part of the tomato, which is not the best, so I, I cut it. That has Shemitah sanctity. It's edible, you know, we're spoiled, so we don't eat it. No, no, no. Or I don't know, you peel the carrots. So the, the peels have sanctity. Some people eat them, it's yeah. edible. I don't eat it, you know, I don't know. My wife decided not to eat the carrots with the peel, so we put it aside. But it's edible. What about, so there's a big discussion about uh, oranges, orange peels, because some people eat, you know, make uh, candies, etc., but most people don't. But animals eat it, so there's a big discussion about that. Some rabbis say yes, yeah, some rabbis say no, and ask your local rabbi what you want, what you want to decide, <coughs> and if you want to be strict, so uh, uh, consider it as kushatshvi. Okay, what happens if you made uh, chicken soup with kushatshvi vegetables? Now, when you eat the chicken soup on Shabbat, you eat kushatshvi soup because the, the, the Kedusha goes from the vegetables to the soup, which is a big privilege. What happens if you have a bit left? Mm -hmm. yell, now, at kids, yell at your kids to finish. Yell at your kids to finish, <laughs> or you have to finish it. But if it's not, so if it's something cooked, so you can put it aside for after two days, I think it's spoiled. But in our institute, we found some of the apostim say, if it's liquid and you put it outside of the fridge, of course, something cooked. Outside of the fridge, open for a night, that's enough. If it was uncovered outside the fridge for one night, it's enough, and, and, and then it's what's called not Laila, doesn't matter, and then you can, it's not Kadosh anymore, it's not edible halachically, and then you can, you can, uh, you can throw it uh, uh, as usual in the, in the sink. Okay, what else did we say about... Uh, That's even it has a solid residue. It has vegetables left over yeah. in the soup. So go the yes. Everything goes. You say you leave it overnight or you should... Uh, ah, not just the liquid, also okay. the vegetables. Also the vegetables, yeah, vegetables. yes. Good. It's, it's, I asked this question because I wasn't sure. I asked it to one of the chief rabbis. He said, yeah, 
And also, the, it's it's all considered one unit with the chicken, with the uh, with the vegetable, with everything inside. It. Okay, what else uh, we didn't uh, talk about? Yes. Okay, good 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 question. Uh, to what in Masrod do not apply in Shemitah because it's hefker. It's not mm. yours. Yeah. Everybody can come and take. That's, that's awesome. Everybody can come and take. You don't that's have to cool. pick from what the master. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. However, if you have fruits and vegetables in your garden, you are supposed to declare it hefker. Everybody can come and take. That's what the Torah says. Now, you don't have a problem people to come and take the fruit and vegetables. But you do have a problem of what? People coming into your yard. You don't want people to start, to start going around and break things and you know. Theoretically, to come to pick the food, okay, no problem, Shemitah, but you know, I don't want the, the, the post can say you should put a sign outside. I have here a lemon tree, it's healthcare, everybody can come and go in. But if you write it, again, you're supposed to leave it open for everybody to come and take, but. You, are, you don't have to suffer loss of the tree and of the irrigation system and people breaking into your house. So what can you do? So two options. One, well, here's the second. First, to put a sign. I have your lemons, Dushat Shvid. If you want them, please WhatsApp me to this and this number or come between two and four and I don't know, twice a week or whatever, or put here your, your number and I will call you. Something practical that people can can get to you. It's mine, sorry. Uh, Someone wants to come to your garden. What? Someone wants to come yeah. to your garden. Uh, that's one option. Second option is to pick and to put it outside with a sign, Dushat Shvit Podus, and please respect it like you should and the best is to, to, to go to our website and to print a one-page, you know, basic halachot of Kushat Shvit, you know, attach it to the there and everybody... Again, you're not responsible if people afterwards don't respect it, but at least to tell the people what, what they should do. So that is the, the second option. If you have plants inside the house, inside the house, do Shemitah apply? No. The answer is no. If it's inside the house, disconnected from the ground and under a roof, and under a roof, that Shemitah doesn't apply. You can do basically everything. However, if you have a mil pesit, you have it disconnected from the ground, but it's open to the sky, so Shemitah does apply. Only rabbinic, but Shemitah does apply. You can water it as usual, but you're not supposed to plant there new things. Meaning you say, well, it's, it's not connected to the ground. Yes, but halakhically, if it's open to the sky, it's still, it's not a house. If it's a greenhouse. If it's a greenhouse, if it's covered, depends, if it's a plastic sheet, so it's a roof. If it's only a, a 50 mesh net, one is not enough. If you put two, is no, it's enough. it's like glass or plastic. So it's, co it's covered, but is it disconnected from the ground? Yeah. Theoretically, no. we're thinking about, you know, if we if we cover this and put like a, a table on this and have ah, one place to plant. Okay, here, this is a good uh, big discussion. Because some people said that, that it has to be a permanent building. I can't be like... Or at least a net house, but something permanent. If you put here just like, a, you know, a plastic sheet above it, it's not something permanent, so it's... Uh, I would say it's not ideal. Yeah. If you are much do, you know, a, a, a permanent structure, yeah. that's okay. But again, you have to put it to make sure it's disconnected from the ground. And, thank you, now I remember, the pots need, needs to be less than 330 liters. Meaning you can't put a plastic sheet, but to put everything on the ground because then it in the ground, it's disconnected. So you have to have parts of next, uh, less than what's called our three hundred thirty liters, and that makes it complicated. Let me go back to.
Just a second, yeah. The Chazonish says Lechatrila, you should have walls as well, but that's not the idea. It's better to have walls, but it's not, you don't have to. Uh, Whatever it disconnects from the from, uh, what, canvas, plastic, uh, pergola, everything that, but it has to be more than fifty percent material. What happens? You leave your fruit hefka outside and nobody takes it. So you take it. Okay. So it's, because of the chaliyot, if you if you put it hefka, nobody takes it. So it's better for the for the food that. You will eat it, or oh, somebody will eat it. So definitely, you're right. Put it one day, two days. I somebody told me one of the lectures. I put it outside. I don't know who will take it. Who not? I'll take it to the synagogue. I'll take it, you know, to the kindergarten. To put it in places that I know people will consume it, and that's even, even, even better. Because then you know somebody will eat it. Okay. And I think. We covered most of the things. Ah, food and vegetables. I forgot. What if you make, if you have like a lemon tree, and instead of putting the lemons out, you just make tons of lemonade, and then the kids give it out to people for free? Does that count? Great. You can make it into something in there. Great. It's even yeah. better. It's even better. <coughs> even better. And when does this tree will have Dushat Shvit next year? From what time exactly the food will be Kadosh, and what time are they still? This year, the sixth year. Hint, we talked about three years ago. Two to bishvat. What? Two to bishvat. From the, when the flowers appear Close, next year. but no. <laughs> when the flowers <laughs> appear next year, which is after Pesach. Oh, the first flowering after two bishvat? <laughs> okay, close. <laughs> Not the flower. After you have the flower, and the halacha calls it chanata. After the flowers fall, you have the beginning of the red right the fruit when it's very, very small. Uh -huh. That if if that happens after two after Rosh Hashanah, so it's sweet. If it happens before Rosh Hashanah, it will be six year, even if you pick it during Shemitah. Understand? For Rosh Hashanah, so for the Chagim, we can pick Rimonim. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Again, most fruit don't have the Chanata in this time of year, but sometimes, let's say lemon, sometimes you have you can have the Chanata right before and after Rosh Hashanah, so you can have the same tree, put from before and after. That's complicated. Oh. But basically, the first few months, it will be only food from previous year. What about the, the vegetables? Vegetables is different. Vegetables is according to the time you harvest. If you harvest after Rosh Hashanah, it's a Kadosh B'Kushat Shvi, and you deal with it as we discussed before. And if it's a... Uh, so, so fruit and vegetables. That's that's the big uh, the big difference. One last thing: it's not gardening, but it's buying fruits and vegetables. You grow here a lot, but you have to buy some fruits and vegetables. Where do you buy them, and what exactly do you buy? Uh, I, things like basil or, or, or oregano. It's when you pick them. When you, when, when, you pick them. when you pick when you them. pick them. Um, okay. So this is a complicated issue. I'll say it in three words. You have two, two and a half options. One option is to buy heter mechira. Farmers sold the land to non, a non-Jew, and then they can uh, they can uh, uh, keep on working during shmita. It's accepted by the rabbanut arashit, accepted by uh, many many rabbis. Most of the I would say the tili umi rabbis are pro, and most of the what's called black hat. Ashkenazim are against, and Sfaradim are, I would say, half-half. That's basically. The, uh, what happens if you don't want to buy Hitam Mechira? What's your other option? Otsar Beitim. That's the third option. <laughs> but the second option... Nutsui. <laughs> important or buying from non-Jews. Meaning, all of the Shmit um, Mehadrin shops, supermarkets you will buy from after Rosh Hashanah, they don't rely, almost all of them do not rely on Hitel Mechira. What they will have there, either imported or buying from non-Jews in Eretz Israel. Mm. Uh, this is a situation. I have a whole lecture about that explaining the different opinions. Just know when you're buying uh, 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 tomatoes from a Mehadrin shop, it's probably either from Gaza or from Turkey. 
okay, that, that, that's the situation. Uh, Why is Mehadrin? <laughs> because there's less chance of having air. They won't accept Heter Mechira and not Otsar Beitin, which is the third option. So, what will you eat? Otsar Beitin is very hard for a restaurant or any of these places to make. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Heter Mechira, they, they won't accept. Otsar <laughs> Beitin, they won't accept either. So, you have. Either import or from uh, non-Jews in Israel. But Hawaii becomes Mehatrim. <laughs> No, the 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 they think that this is a higher level than the Temechirim. Oh. That's what they think. If maybe you can think different, but mm -hmm. depends on the... They are in charge of Nazi. Okay. <laughs> it's so not practical. Every single item you cut to keep it in your kitchen for a week rotting is not practical for anybody. So they make it so you can not using any produce that's possibly uh, to such a yeah, that's one, one answer. Yeah. It's just like saying it's much easier to grow fruits and vegetables in Chutzlas and Eretz Israel. Yeah. Then you don't have to promote, I'm, I'm joking, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. no promote in Masrot, no, uh, no Chada, no, you know, it's easier. We come here, it's difficult, we have problems. I think, you know, even though maybe it's difficult, I, I heard Rav Yaakov Ariel, he asked about that, about the, about the big kitchens, and he said, you know what? I prefer to be a bit more naked, to be a bit more lenient with, with big kitchens, and to allow them even to put in a plastic bag and to put it in a big garbage, the shachvit. I prefer that and them consuming, buying the shachvit, than, than buying other things. Yeah. That's what he mm. said. Meaning it's better to, to buy the shachvit even though you're keeping 80% of the alakot, 90%, I don't know, 70%, but to buy it and not to buy other things that you don't even start keeping the halachot. Again, not well everybody done. agree with them. Yeah. And supporting farmers Wait, here. If you're, ah. you're right, but if you're buying if you're buying the notri from, from chutzlars, then you don't have to put it in the no, no nothing. No, no. It doesn't have it doesn't no have kedusha bichlal, so you just nothing. There's no, there's nothing. There's no in, just a second. Heter mechira doesn't have kedusha shvit. Import and non-Jews doesn't have kedusha shvit. No. But otzar beitin has. What's otzar beitin? This we think. And now it's a, this is the best solution. It's grown only by Jewish farmers in Eretz Israel, according to what the rabbis allow, and it's given. It's a, a, it's a sold in a way that is not problematic according to halacha. Basically, the farmer says the land is not mine. Beidin, take it's yours. Beidin as a representative of of us, of the people, and they say, okay, I want to take care of this pomegranate. I, I'm allowed to, main, to, to maintain it, to give it a bit of water, maybe a bit to cut it, not as I'm allowed to do and every, every year, but I'm allowed to do a few things, so I will have porus. Maybe it won't be as big, as nice. Okay, it won't be as nice and not as many food, but I will have decent food. And these I will distribute to the people like 2,000 years ago. But 2,000 years ago, when they distributed, it was much easier. Today, if you want to distribute, practically, you have a lot of uh, a, a lot of expenses. So it's sold to special shop, shops called Otsara Arit shops, or you can order it online to your house. And then you know this is, uh, and you pay basically just to cover the expenses. And you're not Nobody avoiding the mitzvah, you're partaking in it. You're, and you are part of the mitzvah because you and the farmer are together. And the bait, in just a second, I want to finish this. So it's it's yours. You know, it's not, you know, it's not written and you name the table, but somehow it's yours. And, and then you have to shut it, but <laughs> you have to take care of it. And uh, as I said, you're theoretically supposed to pay less because nobody's making a profit. Practically, it's the same price. Why? Because you still have to pay for the operations involved. The whole operation of once every seven years to build this costs so much money, so all the income that you would make goes there. So it's not, practically, it's not less, but I, I can tell you, nobody is making a profit, and even previous Shemitah, they even lost. Lost money, the, the baby, it was a big problem. So this year, what they did, they asked people to register in advance in order to know how many, you know, how many people. So they have, I think, like coupons. You buy 50 shekels a month, 100, and like 130. 
and then you, you get like a digital coupon and then you can buy it either in the shop next to your house and or the online they don't have yet the, the, the list of the shops because it's not very covered in areas of the Tilu Mikra there's supposed to be shops and the online as well if you live in Eilat so maybe you'll have you know one shop but if you live in Yerushalayim I hope you will have a few, a few, a few more but that's they can't plan. So that's only what's left over from the sixth year, and it's going to expire by like. Very December, good January. question. So that so means you listen. Right, 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 right. That's very good. Fruit is supposed to have the whole year. Vegetables are saying, wait, what will happen after Hanukkah? That's it. Okay. The answer is another lecture called Olay Mitzrayim in the Negev. And the, the Western non Negev. The non biblical parts of Israel? And the Arava. But that's not. Are not the same level concerning Shemitah of Eretz Israel. The Mishnah says there's three levels of Eretz Israel. When you say Eretz Israel, what, what are the borders? Like Midnat Israel today, Midnat Israel before 67, 50 years ago, 2000 years ago. So the Mishnah gives three borders. The larger uh, borders from the Prat till, till Nahar and Nilus till the Prat, whatever was from Shlav Ramavir. Which means if you import things from parts of Jordan, it's still problematic. No, because those parts are not, don't have the Shemitah uh, Isurim. Isur Bichal? And Kedushat Shri, they don't. Have. Then you have a, a smaller border okay. called Olei Mishrai. Then you have even a smaller bo border called Olei Bavel. In the smallest border, everything applies. In Ole Mitzrayim, the middle border, some things apply and some no, and there's no Sfichim, that's not, there's no Sfichim, and according to most rabbis, even if you don't rely on Heter Mechira, when you said, I don't rely on Heter Mechira, that's only in the first border, the, the closest border, Ole Bavel, but in the larger border, Ole Mitzrayim, that we see in Halakha is easier, many things, then we allow to do Heter Mechira, and that's what they're going to do. They're going to have vegetables during Shemitah planted with the Temechira and Ole Mitzrayim in the Western Negev and in the Arava. And I spoke to the person two weeks ago and I told them last Shemitah, I, I heard that there weren't enough vegetables. He said, yes, that's where there was a problem. And I can show you, he said, I can't show, I can show, I cannot show you, but he uh, said, I can show you, I have a, a, a signed contract with farmers in the Negev and in the Arava for all the vegetables, let's say, almost all the vegetables for almost the whole year. Will it be a hundred percent? No. Will it be the highest quality, highest quantity in every shop? No, but we hope it will be close to that. Which Beidin is the one that... So there's one, what we work with is uh, Otsar Haaretz Beidin, it's Rav uh, Shmuel Eliyahu, you know, from Tzfat, uh, Rav Yaakov Ariel from Ramat Gan, Rav Dov Lior from, uh, from Kiat Arba, Rav uh, Igra Dayan in the Big Beidin Yerushalayim, and Rav Abutbul, which is the son-in-law of Rav Ovadia Yosef. How do you... He's part of the Beidin. And how do you contact them? There are uh, six rabbis. Six rabbis, and they are part of the Beidin. And whoever wants, <coughs> you can check online what's our art. It's only in Hebrew now. I'm sorry. What? And, uh, but you can check it. And if not, you can take my contact and send me an email, and I'll send you the exact link. With, again, there's a film about the Tzara. It's explained. Yes. If you're talking about trees, fruitful trees, until the middle of half. If you're talking about vegetables, until up to two weeks before. Two weeks before Shemitah. Because it has to 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 sprout before Shemitah. But a tree that's planted that close is still required for Orla, so in any case you can't have the tree. Correct, and you won't have food either. Yeah. Okay. If you decide to go with Uksara, it will be you can do hybrid, you can take uh, import. No, no, Otsar Haaretz do no, not... No, 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 but if there's not enough... Uh, yeah, uh, no, that, don't ask me what you want to do. No, but... No, I'm saying, I, what I will do, if there won't be an Otsar Haaretz, I won't starve. I will take from other places, I would first go to Otsar Haaretz, do my weekly shopping, 
if they want to have the, I don't know, uh, onion, Tomato. and we want onions, so I won't say like 2,000 years ago, okay, no onion, so I'm not eating, so I won't go. Now it's up to you if you want to buy the, I would say the Rabanut Heter Mechira, or the, what's called Nehadrin, the import and non-Jews, it's up to you, just you should know when you're buying, what are you buying. I think we'll finish here at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Thank you very much. If you have more questions, so you're welcome to come. Is this going to be much. ready in English before the Shemitah year yes, begins? Yes, it yes, it will. Yes? It will, it will. Okay. Yes.